sad. And I think that was at least part, perhaps, of why the diet in the 1960s and 70s fell out of favor, was there really wasn't the next generation to kind of bring it continued into the future. Okay. And you say, well, okay, you know, now we're doing much better, right? You heard from Beth Zupak Kenia, the Charlie Foundation, 1994, did an amazing job for all of us in the field, bringing the diet into sort of the forefront. Absolutely, we're in a much better place today, but we need to be careful, okay? This is Google Trends. You look at the internet, not just books for ketogenic diet, and you can see we had a peak, and now it's actually starting to drop and become less popular again. So history could repeat itself for all, those of us certainly that do it for epilepsy, but also for all of you in the room. And so what can we do to stop this? What do we do moving forward? How do we prevent another decline? And again, what I'm going to talk about is related to epilepsy and the ketogenic diet for epilepsy, but I think has widespread implications for anybody here in this room using it for other conditions. I think we need to do some things that I think could potentially prevent that decline from happening in the next 100 years. Number one, I think we need to be flexible. We need to be willing to listen to all of us who are here in the room when you hear an interesting idea and be creative. I'm gonna come back to that. The second, if I can't say it enough times, you have a sort of raise your hand every time I say the word collaborate. Collaborate, right? I think it's really important for all of us in the field to work together. And then lastly, at the end, something that's really a personal mission of mine is mentorship. Mentoring others, sort of helping the next person in the field uh, to do ketogenic diet work.